Um, I, I read a story from NBC News that is just agonizing. Tabitha Brown, 29, of Oregon, says she won't vote because she finds her, she finds her ballot too confusing. Quote, I'm just a simple girl, she said. Quote, dumb it down for us, end quote. Nope, you know what? I'm taking away your rights to vote. Dumb it down Dumb it for down? Us? How hard, how how hard, hard is it? How hard is that? Barack Obama, Mitt Romney, check one. Real tough. That's real tough. In Buffalo, Ryan King, 19, wow. says he won't vote because he doesn't know if he's registered. He mailed in his registration form, but nobody replied, and he doesn't know where to show up. Oh, my God. Yeah. Good. I don't want you voting either. People should be deported. Further south in Bronx, Lala, a woman who is staying at a shelter, isn't voting because she th- thought she needed a state ID, which she can't afford. Well, her name is Lala. She shouldn't be allowed to when vote she anyway. didn't, When she learned she didn't need an ID, it was too late to register anyway. Mm-hmm. Political pundits uh, say undecided voters will determine the election, but little is said about the people like Brown, King, and Lala who aren't voting. Since the 1960s, voter turnout has steadily declined in the U.S., 64% voting age citizens voted in 2008 compared to 93 in Chile, 86% in Germany, wow. and 74% in Canada. We uh, suck. Yeah, it's bad. In this election, the fear is that some non-voters may have wanted to vote. Voters cried out in frustration as polling stations became overwhelmed. Oh, truth for the love. Really? Really? Now you can't stand in line? How many... How many... <laughs> How many different ways can you vote and vote early? I mean, it's really not that hard. And if you have to wait 45 minutes, so what? I'm sorry that it's we not worth it. I'm sorry that we don't just make it on who you're watching on television and Nielsen just counts the boxes. Yeah. Um uh, let's see here. Um NBC News recently asked uh, readers via Twitter, Facebook and through nbcnews.com to tell us why they wouldn't cast their ballots. They don't like their choices. They're busy. And they're not interested. Broken down, the least likely voters have the lowest level of education. In fact, the most pronounced voting gap in 2008 was not between young and senior, but between those with a high school degree and those with advanced degrees, 39% to 83%. The wealthier, more likely voters, 52% of those annual income of less than $20,000 voted versus 80% of those families bringing in more than $100,000. Everyone's pressed for time these days, and therefore, whether you're an employer, your employer is actively allowing people to go vote, the employees may feel time-pressed or constrained to take that legally protected time. Yeah, it really is. It really is 1875 in the South, where you got to go keep working at that sewing machine. You keep, you keep, you keep going. You've got a 16-hour day. You want to go vote? Well, if you're not voting my way, you're not leaving that sewing machine. Yeah, that's America today, isn't it? Although some states require employees to give workers time off to vote, human resources say the laws are too... too, Oh, Jesus Christ. Human resource officers say the laws are sometimes too confusing. Mm Mm-hmm. About 13% of those responding to the census survey said they didn't vote because they didn't like the candidates in 08. The theme emerged among our readers, too. Many of the women in their 30s and 40s who say they will not be voting, it wasn't political. Leaving their forms blank was a sense, in some sense, a vote of no confidence. I like this one. Suzanne Holland, 41-year-old public library director from Wisconsin, said, It feels like a third choice to me. We tend to think that we have two choices because third parties are not viable, but there is a third choice to let other people decide because sometimes either their choice goes against everything we believe in. Maybe, maybe just leaving it blank is a third choice. You dope. Holland has voted in the past year, but she says the debates between Obama and Romney cemented my distaste for both candidates. Brianne Findlay, 32, of Illinois, also fed up with Obama and Romney. She said her and her husband have five children between the two of them. She's a stay-at-home mom and devoutly Pentecostal. Listen to this one. I keep going back and forth. I looked, at, I looked online to see who else was running for president, Green Party or some other independent group, but I didn't like those guys either. Her sister-in-law was appalled. She said, she says I'm not allowing my voice to be heard, saying that I should reconsider because my vote matters. But there are things I need to be voting for. 
I, I'm a Christian, and I believe that God is in charge. So I'm fine with this because if if this guy wins, it's not going to be the end of the world because God is still our God. Yeah, yeah. That's why when I have to dig a hole or a trench or something, I just put the shovel on the ground and then stand there because <laughs> God will dig that hole. Because God is still God. If he needed that trench, mm-hmm. he'd do it. That's why. It's a good point. That's why if I'm ever in a hurricane, I'm not getting my family out. No. I, I, I might have a boot on the, on the back of my, uh, on the, in the backyard of my house that mm-hmm. I could get in and sail away. But I'm not going to take the time to go get in the boat because I believe in God and God is still God. You dope. Heather Fetton, she's 37, she's a Catholic in Florida. She found herself lost in the political middle as a Catholic, opposed to abortion, but she's also opposed to the death penalty and in favor of gun control. She has nuanced views of immigration. Nuanced views? I posted to my Facebook page, who should I vote for? Give me a good moral reason. But nobody on my Facebook page could give me a good moral reason. Oh, well, if I can't get my answers from a Facebook page... There just aren't any answers available. Well, she didn't say she mm. has tried to tweet. Oh. If you could just get... If, if we could, could tweet just, it, yeah, then... we could just tweet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. good moral reason. Back in New York, King was a student. Um, I was not alone was struggling to register to vote. 6% of non-voters between the ages of 18 and 24 didn't vote because they didn't know how or when to sign up. Well, God forbid we expect you to be in college and be able to figure that one out for yourself. After mailing in a voter registration form, he looked online for clues about where he should vote. (laughs) That's the way we like to do it. Clues? Yeah, we like to put them all in clues. (laughs) You know, there's no specific place. Uh, It's like, vote in, fill in the blank, Alabama. Vote in. I wonder if you could Google that. Could there you were, Google such no, a thing no, and couldn't. find a clue? No, you couldn't. No, there, well, you can find a clue, but it'll just say it's a building somewhere in your city. And then another clue will be like it has a front door. Yeah, I hear if you order certain things at like a Chinese restaurant, your fortune cookie will t- give you a hint on where you can go to figure out how to vote. Really? Yeah, it's pretty impressive. You have to be a sleuth. Okay. Though. I feel so in disenfranchised voting in New York. It doesn't matter. If I voted for Obama, it wouldn't count. So why bother? I, that's I a good point. I agree with you on that. That's yeah, a me good too. That you don't, don't do it. If you want, definitely not if you want, I love this. If you want me to vote so bad, at least meet me halfway. What does that mean? I, I, the politicians, if they we'll want to bring the voting vote, booth I to guess, your house. We'll bring it. Well, not no, to your house, way. but maybe to your street, maybe okay. to your garage. All right. I honestly no, we don't want you to vote. We I don't, don't care if to. you're if you're gonna vote Republican for Romney. Or, yeah, I, don't I don't care. care. If you're if you have that attitude, don't vote. You're stupid. In the Bronx, Layla was slightly sheepish to find out she didn't need an ID to vote. She used to live in Georgia where ID is required, but mostly she said she feels increasingly apathetic. More pressing was food and dinner and a job. She checked her wallet. She had thirty dollars to her name. She said she read Romney's five-point plan but found it lacking and disjointed. As much as I'd love to be bitter about living in poverty during the Obama administration, I have to consider the alternative is a man without a plan. Said the woman with 30 bucks to her name. Yeah, but but then she grew contemplative. Mm -hmm. All I need is something as simple as a job. I could have my quality of life back quickly. I just don't know how voting is going to meet my immediate needs. Wow, that's a brilliant philosophy on life. This, we don't recover if we don't start changing who we are. If we don't start, if if we don't teach our children, bring your kids to the voting, take them out of school. They'd be much better for them to remember. You going standing in line all day with your kids and I know it'd be a pain in the ass. Uh, how long is this line? Shut up. What did I read about you on NBC News? It'd be much better for them to remember going voting with you than even in, in school tomorrow. Show what it takes. Show them that it's worth it. Not everything is easy. Not everything is immediate. 
And you know what? Mitt Romney's not going to change things immediately. He can't change things immediately. He's not the Messiah. Neither was the last guy. And you know what? Mitt Romney gets in. There's probably going to be a lot of things that piss us off. But what you do is you vote and you find the best person you can and you stay together. Because if we stay together on Wednesday, we'll be able to protect the good guys and make sure the bad guys don't get in. The reason why are, well, there's no choice. The parties are both the same. You know why? Because we've allowed them to become that. We've allowed them because we've just unplugged. Ah, it doesn't matter anyway. They know that. Why do you think they're running negative ads? Negative ads make people say, I just don't even want to vote. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to just run negative ad after negative ad so you don't vote. Isn't it amazing the choice that Mitt Romney made? The choice in the last, uh, the last debate was, Mr. President, I mean, he had him dead to rights so many times. He didn't do it. Why? Mr. President, attacking me is not a plan. Attacking me is not going to move us forward. I think he stepped into the mantle of the president of the United States because he's all he's saying now is I'm going to find the reasonable people in Washington that know we're broken and I am going to I'm going to come together and fix it. He knows he can't have he he'll never be able to change anything in Washington if it was a blood sport. It's a blood sport. The president this weekend was talking about revenge, voting for revenge. That's not who we are. That's not who we are. I quite honestly, I, I, there are times I don't know who we are. I read stories like that and I say, well, you know, I don't know who we are. It's too difficult to figure out the clues as to where to vote. Please. I'm glad you're staying home. It's the simplest test. If you can't find your way there, you can't vote. 